So Mark, did you see that video of Dana White, Vegas Matt, and a few other influencers playing the high limit slots, celebrities in their own right? But what I loved is Dana White looked like he had no idea how slot machines work. Yeah, I mean, he goes in and wins half a million dollars playing blackjack, and he's like, what, you won 30K just pushing some buttons? And it, it does seem easy when you watch these videos and these reels. You're like, oh, I could do it. You know, 20K turning into 50K. Who wouldn't want that? And it's just funny that he's like, this is complete crap. <laughs> Well, he's like synonymous with Vegas and casinos and everything, but clearly, you know, there's different walled gardens and he doesn't venture over there. But as you said, they hit a big jackpot and he was stunned. Yeah, it was, it was amazing seeing the same thing I'd be sitting there like that's money I would never put into a slot. So that's why it's so fun to watch these type of things. And I'd just be kind of like, OK, where are we going to celebrate? But they, they probably do this on a regular basis. Shout out to the slot influencers who are bringing positivity and fun to the community. Love watching their videos. I went down like a dark hole with the Steve guy because I never heard of him before. And he had a video where he lost a ton of money in Vegas. And Dana White actually came out, played blackjack, 130K and gave it to him and said, here you go. Here's here's the money you lost. And then he went and lost it at the table anyway. <laughs> it's nice to have friends like Dana White. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Big news of the week, Mark, was bed bugs. I guess the media made sure that everybody knew that a few places had bed bugs over the last few months. I mean, we have 155,000 hotel rooms or something crazy like that, but bed bugs were found everywhere from Excalibur up to Encore. Encore are very interesting. They have bed bug sniffing dogs. They tout that as their benefit to get rid of everything. I think it's not so bad when you only have a few cases out of as many tourists and rooms that we have. People think bed bugs still are dirty or or from low CD places and motels, and they can show up anywhere. Like, they don't care. It has nothing to do with cleanliness. If they come with someone, they're going to make a little home there, and they're going to they're gonna live there for a bit. And you might not see them. Like, early on, you can check, and, and people could be changing the beds and just not see any signs of them. So it can take a little bit. So it's not surprising to see a couple cases of it. I've actually seen uh, bed bugs sniffing dogs in person do their work. It's pretty impressive. They get trained just like a bomb sniffing dog to sniff the bugs. So if, I mean, if you have some time on your hands, Google it, look on YouTube, there's some videos on it. It's, it's crazy what they can do. But I wouldn't worry, like I said, as many rooms, it's always a risk. Shout out to our checking for bed bugs in your room video on the channel from years ago. You can watch yeah, Mark show video. you what he does when he gets in there. <laughs> So let's move on to Bally's. They had an earnings call. We have a couple of earnings calls this week with Caesars and Bally's Corporation. Nothing as blockbuster as we got with Wynn or MGM. But on the call, they updated on Tropicana, just basically saying demolition is going to go forward. Also saying that they're going to deliver the site to their partners, the A's, when they're supposed to by contracts. But nothing else on the future stadium other than we might see renders in one to two months. They also said they don't know what their plans are for the stadium. They're weighing all of their options for the new casino, whatever they're going to build on the rest of that site. Yeah, I guess, I'm guessing it depends on what the A's do with the, and they don't know what they're going to do with the stadium. So you can't really picture what you're going to create until you know what they're going to create. So it's kind of a mess, but I'm sure there's contracts in place that they have to do the demolition and they have to get the ground ready. And I mean, they were probably going to be knocking it down anyway. So even if this does fall through, I'm guessing they feel okay going through with it because then they can build something else on the site or sell the site, something along those lines. But it's just a lot up in the air and they're, you know, setting the path, but we still don't know anything. As far as whether there'll be an implosion or not, we don't know that either. They're getting all of their ducks in a row as far as demolition, still getting the cost together and the timeline and stuff. So no new information on that. There's been some concerns we might not get an implosion because it's too close to the airport, but we really don't know. Hopefully we can get a big boom. That's what we want, big booms in Las Vegas. Yeah, we need like the 14,000 Instagram and, and YouTube people up there filming it for us too. I guess I'll have to join them uh, to, to <laughs> yeah. say goodbye. So with the pandemic, we lost a lot of poker rooms in Las Vegas. And I think that's been a trend going back quite a long time where poker rooms sort of shudder. I don't think that they're as economical driving revenue for some of the casinos, but Venetian is doubling down and they're building a brand new poker room to replace their old one. It's going to be in the Grand Canal shops on the second floor. So kind of moving it away from the casino floor, moving from 35 up to 50 tables, 14,000 square feet of space. They're going to have USB chargers at every seat, a Coca-Cola soda fountain, dedicated bathrooms, trying to make this a better space for poker players. 
this is something we haven't seen other casinos invest in. So it's interesting to see. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you're moving it outside the casino and then you can repurpose that space for higher revenue games, I think that makes a lot of sense. And then you're moving this into the shops and, and maybe that that's a space that wasn't really used that much. So you're, you're kind of winning on both sides. And then I thought it was interesting that they're making it easier for live streaming uh, for people playing the games for themselves as well as for tournaments and things like that. And I think that's really the way where you can make some money. I mean, you make a little bit of money off of the bets and all that stuff, but to really get it is throw these tournaments and then live stream them, have people watch them on YouTube. And I think that's the future. There's a big market for it out there and it's kind of crazy that none of them have really tapped into it. So I think it's pretty brilliant on their part and we'll just have to see how it plays out. Yeah, they have a streaming room. This just shows you how much casinos have changed in the last few years with social media and stuff. The fact that they're building a streaming room in the poker room is nuts. Casinos just a few years ago, so anti-camera everywhere. Now they're starting to embrace it. Good to see that because times have changed and this looks like a poker room for the next, you know, century or the next decade at least. So uh, yeah, I'm sure poker players will love it. Yeah. Let us know in the comments if you're a player <laughs> anything, excited for this. Does anything make it a century in Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> Very true. What is cool in Vegas is fog. We don't get fog that often in Las Vegas. So I thought it was worth pointing out because we just had a beautiful night with low hanging fog over the strip. Got some cool aerials from the airplanes, some other shots around town. Makes it look uh, very atmospheric. I was thinking more like industrial. Like it, it looks instead of fog because it's a weird, the way it's set up and where it stops and you don't really see that anywhere else. It's just kind of like this, almost like a cloud, like just this one area that's held and it kind of reminds me of like stack smoke coming out of like an industrial plant that you see and it kind of trails off so that's almost what it looks like to me which still gives it a cool effect like the sphere with the blue lights that looked really amazing in the fog and and just seeing it from the airplane of how it was separated there was like no fog above no fog below it was really really cool but it just kind of gave me that like early 1900s vibe for some reason People say Las Vegas is ugly, it's just desert, yet we are always able to show these cool visuals, whether it's the snow in the mountains, the fog. It really displays so many different ways depending on the weather and everything, so it's always nice to see something different, a different look at the beautiful lights and the strip and everything else. If you want to see beauty, I mean, just take a drive out to Laughlin and you see tons of awesome expanse desert i mean desert can be beautiful too and i thought it was really cool uh, different sight lines stuff like that the river everything i mean there's a lot of good nature stuff around that people don't give it credit for you and laughlin okay let's <laughs> yeah. talk dave portnoy he was in town for the super bowl he did the one pipe pizza reviews we talked a little bit about it but he reviewed four different pizza places when he was here including Sand Dollar Lounge, which we're going to talk about on our bonus show Sunday. We have a bonus show coming up talking about your time in Las Vegas, your thoughts on Fountain Blue, going to Golden Steer, all of that. So people should check that out on Sunday. Sand Dollar, he gave a 6.5 for their pizza. Now, One Bite Pizza Reviews has become huge. I'm sure a lot of people know it. But basically the idea, he gives a score out of 10 when he takes one bite and he reviews pizza all over the country. He takes like six bites, but he always says, yeah. everybody knows the rules, one bite. And then he like munches on a whole piece of pizza and then says the score. <laughs> so other places he did, he did Wet Red Dwarf, which is another divey bar that has Detroit pizza. He gave that a 7.5 out of 10, which is a pretty good score for him. Manzu Italian, he gave a 7.8 out of 10. The crust on that Manzu Italian looked phenomenal. I don't know how a crust can look so tasty, but this one did. And then the best in Las Vegas, the best score he's ever given to pizza in Las Vegas, Don DeMarco's at 7.9. So that's one that's on our list, I think, for the next time you're in town. And my yeah. buddy's been telling me about it forever. Looks great. Yeah, Don DeMarco's in the video. It just drives me nuts that he's like standing there talking to the owner and the cheese is like sliding off the pizza. And I'm like, dude, just eat it and then talk. Like, don't let it all ooze out and drip and all that stuff. But Red Dwarf, uh, it looked pretty good for Detroit style pizza. I thought the crust and the edges all looked like they got uh, taken care of. They put a decent decent amount of sauce on it so i think that's a good option uh there I, I really like the he showed a little bit of the inside too it looked really cool kind of tiki bar-esque and a little place i'd never heard of so i'm kind of excited to check that out not so much for the pizza but more just for the environment inside it looked amazing so much good pizza in las vegas now it feels like we're in a pizza renaissance not just in las vegas but everywhere you shouldn't eat a bad piece of pizza because there's so much good stuff around don't waste your calories on the bad stuff the pizza at resorts world every time i walk by it i forget the name like murberry or whatever it looks horrible every time so don't eat that probably it looks like sabaros i don't know what they're doing there as a reminder we have our patreon we do a weekly after show five dollars a month gets you access to it listen to it as a podcast watch as a video mark and i have a lot of fun going more in depth about vegas joking around all that good stuff patreon.com forward slash mtm vegas 
for more information. So a couple of weeks ago, we talked about GVR and I showed you guys the new high limit room that they put in there. The slot room wasn't quite done because it's in a separate area and now it is open and Green Valley Ranch shared a video of what it looks like. Not a surprise, it looks stunning. It looks strip level, very similar to the table area and uh, just a step up for Green Valley Ranch for sure. Yeah, it looked really, really nice. I thought there was something interesting pointed out in that episode, like in the comments. Wasn't there some type of law that there is in Vegas that they have to let you into those rooms? And I don't know, sometimes people feel like if they're not playing, they can't go in and sit at the bar. But as you said, and some some other commenter brought up, you can. Like, you have every right to go in there and order a drink and sit down. They can't stop you, right? Correct. When gaming is going on, it has to be open to the public. So that is the rule. I don't know as far as what you could do behavior in there you know as far as <laughs> loitering or what's going on but those spaces every high limit room they're open to the public so you can certainly peek in there look in there see how the other half lives maybe you'll see dana white and vegas matt playing high limits or something like that on slot machines but always fun to go in there but green valley ranch stepped it up big time station casino stepping it up for the high limit for the high net worth customers that's clearly their focus these days i mean that's what everybody's kind of moving to is the the high end stuff so it's cool to have it at a locals casino and like we've always said they probably have better drinks better pours in their uh, higher shelf stuff so if you go put a little bit of money in and we've even mentioned sometimes they have dollar machines or not like hugely expensive machines so it's worth going in and checking out and seeing what you can get comped while you're there. So Terry Fader is out at MGM Resorts. If you came to Las Vegas for like a decade, right, just driving down the strip on the Mirage marquee, you would see Terry Fader. And he did that showroom, the old Danny Gann showroom at Mirage forever. In COVID, he moved to the Zumanity showroom. And then, of course, Mirage got sold off. He was there kind of temporarily. And then they moved him into the Liberty Loft. This is a space I hadn't really ever heard of. It was an event space that's kind of used as a theater it sits above Tom's Urban in the sports book on the third floor. You have to take an elevator there. So he's fallen all the way down to this theater, and now he's out at MGM. Rumors are he'll go to Strat for a residency, and he wasn't happy with the theater. I can't imagine he was, given where he was and then where he ended up. If you've had a show for that long and been successful, it's kind of a slap in the face to get put into basically this back storage room type of cast-off place that we used occasionally for private events, but never really did a show in it. And then they're like, hey, why don't you go there? I mean, that's kind of saying, get out of here. So I'm glad he's finding a new home. And he was big when he first came out. Everybody loved the show. It's kind of like Blue Man Group, like we talked about. I don't hear a ton about it anymore. So I wonder if it's run its course a bit. But maybe this breathes some new life into it and gives him some new clientele. So good for him and, and happy to see it. Yeah, I wonder if ventriloquism is like a something of the past, right? It's not very contemporary and modern. And maybe the tastes have changed a little bit. That theater at New York, New York was only 400 seats. And he's been there for a couple of years. So that just tells you that he's not drawing thousands and thousands of people to show. So he probably didn't need it. But hopefully he does better at the Strat. In 15 years of success with MGM Resorts on the Strip, certainly to be congratulated on that. So Pinky Ring, that new venue by Bruno Mars, has opened at Bellagio. If you remember, that was supposed to open at Mirage, where the renovated rum bar is. And obviously, Obviously, MGM decided to sell it, moved it to Bellagio. It's another venue where they're not allowing phones inside or allowing people to film. Although one person on Twitter I seemed to be a VIP at Bellagio, he was able to capture a video inside so we can see it. Uh, looks great. It's nuts how many venues these days don't allow you to film. We see a couple at, at Wynn and a couple at Bellagio now. You think that's good where you get your privacy, you get a kind of an old school throwback experience without all the phones? I mean, we talked about this with the U2 show, like everybody holding up their phone when we made the joke, does anybody film us when they're driving and somebody posts that on Twitter, I still crack up about that. They're, <laughs> they're, while they're driving in their Tesla, they were filming us uh, talking on YouTube, which cracked me up. No, I, I like this. Not so much for my privacy or anything like that. I think it just forces people to be in the moment and appreciate what's happening in front of them. I mean, the room looks super sexy. The last couple of things we've seen come out of Bellagio and stuff like that, everything looks great. This really fits that. They're going to have live music there. It's kind of like an old school Vegas vibe, throwback to a Rat Pack type show, it looks like. And I would want to be in there and I don't want somebody blocking my view or just kind of taking away and people forget to turn off flash and all that kind of stuff. So I'm all for it. I think that's a great move. I totally agree. I think this is great. The Lilet Wind does it. And like I said, there's a few other venues that are blocking phones now. And yeah, why not? Especially if you're in the vibe in the era, kind of a throwback supper club type vibe. You don't want all of the distractions of the technology and we can give it up for a few minutes. 
but I'm glad that he was able to sneak something inside and get us a view so we can see what it looks like. I agree, Bellagio has been nailing it between the vault and this, lots of new venues that look great. The high-end customer in Las Vegas is served very well right now. Other people, not so we much, need, I don't know. But. We need the low end. We need the O'Shea's. We need the dirty. We need the dive. We need the fun. Come on, it's lots of fun. You're all we got. You got to bring it. Well, speaking of lots of fun, we got some messages from people this week that they're adding in the coin slots and table games to slots of fun this week. So the carpet has stayed apparently, which I wouldn't have complained if they put in a new version of the same carpet because it's a little faded and stuff, but uh, we'll get over there. But new machines and table games being put into slots of fun. Yes. Now heading further north for the regular people out there, Atomic Golf. See, Top Golf is for the high end people. Atomic Golf is for the regular people. And we got a view. It's getting closer to opening. We don't know the date. I don't believe it's been announced yet, but... These latest views show that it's almost finished. I want to see the inside. I want to see like the bar areas, the restaurant areas. The outside, everybody knows what Top Golf looks like. This is just Top Golf 2.0. So I'm not like all in curious about that. I know what you're going to get there for the most part. I, I doubt they're going to reinvent the wheel. I kind of want to see like, is this a place to go worth to go hang out before or after you're done golfing? You know, if you're staying at the Strat, you go over there for dinner, all that kind of stuff. So we need to see a bit of that. And that's what I'm looking forward to. And let's close with the Caesars earnings call. It wasn't as sexy as some of the other earnings calls, but we did learn a little bit about what's going on. And talking F1, he said it was a huge lift for their higher end properties, not so much for the other properties. And just like the CEOs of Wynn and MGM, he said that they have to do better for the lower end properties and for the city. This is a talking point. You have to think that this is almost rehearsed, that on each earnings call, they're saying this to kind of appease everybody in the city who didn't do well. Of course, Caesars expected a 5% EBITDA bump, they said, from F1 and only got a 4% bump. So not too far off their projections, but they clearly suffered a little on the low end. Everybody thought this would be kind of like Super Bowl. And I'm excited to hear what the Super Bowl brought for everybody because I think it'll be completely different. You'll see it across the board, all venues, all you know, local businesses, everybody's going to see that bump. And this, we saw it just at a certain select few properties. and But that care if you had one of those, it carried enough to bring everything up. But, you know, you saw it dip on the on the other end. So they do need to figure out a way to do the messaging there to get people in, you know, make it a full on event throughout the whole city, not just, you know, for high end people coming from overseas and stuff like that. So Tom Reeg, the CEO, was asked if they're going to sell a property, which they're asked on every earnings call. And as he said, quote, in terms of asset sales, everything's for sale every day in a public company, but we're not anticipating doing anything actively on our end. So we had those rumors last year that they were looking to sell a property. He even came out and said at one point that they were looking to sell a property. High bids welcome, everything else, no thank you. Yeah, it's kind of like in sports when the GM's like, oh, is that person up for on the trading block? Well, everybody's on the trading block if it's a good enough offer. So somebody could come in. Nobody is. I mean, we've seen pauses on all these new constructions and stuff like that. I don't think anybody's in the market for paying these high prices. I mean, they kind of got out of Rio. They did a little bit in, in a, somewhat of a way. What does anybody want from Caesars? What property would be drawing people in that you'd want to buy? Maybe Planet Hollywood? I don't know that they really have that gem that they could sell anyway. Yeah, probably not for the money that they want. And the last sort of takeaway was about the Versailles Tower. He talked about how those rooms were offline and that was a revenue hit for them taking those rooms offline with an average daily rate of about $200 a night. He did seem to claim that they're all back online. So the whole Versailles Tower is done. Also said that the bridge is coming and that won't affect customers. But you know, as we know, the bridge is not even where it closed. So I think they're going to open those rooms a whole year before that bridge is done, which is nuts. Yeah, I don't understand this. This is kind of we've seen this with Vegas. It's just they they build properties and they're like, oh, you know what? We need to build walkways and and bridges and all this stuff. It's like that. Let's put the infrastructure in there first before we open these things, so everything's smooth. But it's all a fight about where the money's going to come from, who's going to pay for it. With this, it's their own property, so they're going to pay for it. Why wouldn't you do it first? You don't want to have construction going on while people are trying to enjoy their room. It just should have been done already. It's bizarre. And anybody who's been over there knows that the tower is not done. So I don't know what they're talking about. All the rooms are done because the balcony rooms certainly aren't done. And the outside of the tower is not done. So I don't know. It seems like they rushed to get the regular rooms renovated there so that they could get the higher rates and by associating with Paris instead of waiting and leaving that tower as part of Horseshoe until they had everything done, the outside, the bridge, and then switch it over then. So it seems like it was a money play, higher rates, even though it's still the same tower as part of Horseshoe as of now. I guess new rooms, though. Yeah, I mean, it's updated. I'm, it is what it is. It's Caesars, man. Yeah, it's Caesars, man. That's the, the saying of the moment. <laughs> So let us know what you guys think about anything we talked about today. Bed bugs, the poker room at Venetian, 
Caesar's earnings, all of that stuff, hit us up in the comments. We do two shows a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, but we have a bonus show this Sunday, so look for that. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. Have a good weekend, everybody. See you on Sunday.